time, it's always Christmas when a little child is born. The angels sing their song in somebody's sky, and heaven fills the atmosphere of somebody's home with its gloria in excelsis, and the message of peace on earth and goodwill among men. As Bret Hart tells a story, it happened in Roaring Camp during the gold rush days in old California. Peace and goodwill were almost unknown at Roaring Camp until that little baby was born. Even among the mining camps of the lawless West, Roaring Camp was known to be among the worst. When men differed an opinion over their cards, they settled the dispute by shooting each other. To die a natural death at Roaring Camp was almost unknown. There was just one woman there, poor old Sal. She was everybody's woman. During the birth of her baby that night, poor Sal died. And thus the baby belonged to the camp, and the camp decided to do its duty by the baby. The baby was lying in the rags in a box, but the men felt that the box wouldn't do. So a man was sent 80 miles on a mule train to get a rosewood cradle, the best that money could buy. The cradle was brought, but the rags seemed out of place, and the messenger had to return all the way to Sacramento for lace, regardless of the cost. But when the little baby, lying amidst the lace in the rosewood cradle, took his place in the middle of the room, the men noticed a thing they had never noticed before. The floor was absolutely filthy. And when they had scrubbed the floor and made it clean, they made a new discovery. They saw that in order to match the floor and the rosewood cradle and the lacework and the baby, the walls would have to be cleaned and the ceilings whitewashed and the windows draped with curtains. There also had to be long periods of quiet to allow the baby to sleep. And so the quality that had given Roaring Camp its name left it. One day, the men took the cradle out to the mines, but the mining area was a dusty and dreary place. So to please the baby's eye, they planted brightly colored flowers round about the spot where the cradle stood. And so the mine became a garden. Best of all, a change came over the appearance of the men themselves. Up at Tuttle's store, the owner placed mirrors round about the room in which the men lounged and chatted and smoked. And soon there was a great demand for soap and shaving materials, collars, ties, and even suits of clothes. The baby had transformed everything. The Roman world itself was a roaring camp 2,000 years ago. Men were either slave owners or slaves. Womanhood was often debased. Unwanted children were often strangled or drowned. And outside of Judaism, there was little to prevent it, and few seemed to care. Then, a little child was born in Bethlehem. In the presence of that little child, men saw, as they had never seen before, that the world needed changing. The cry of the slave could not harmonize with the song of the angels. So slavery had to eventually go. The degradation of womanhood was put to shame by the virgin mother. A halo felt upon the brows of motherhood. And ever since that little baby was born, childhood has been treated as a more sacred thing. As the little child of Bethlehem asserts his authority over the hearts of men, the things that still disfigure our civilization could vanish one by one. The bitterness of our international strife, the vice of moral decadence, the horrors of crime, the social injustices, all of these must someday yield to his authority. As the cradle is exchanged for a cross, so someday it will have a crown. And the Bible says that every knee will bow to his authority. And certainly, as the babe of Bethlehem is the Son of God, the transformation of the world like Roaring Camp will be carried to completion someday. And the same is true of you as an individual. The Christ child must be born afresh in your heart. Your heart must become his end. And angels can sing again 
at this Christmas season of peace and goodwill as they sang in the fields of Bethlehem so long ago. Shepherds will come once more to see the wonders that have come to pass. Men and women transformed by his power. John, that was the little story I wanted to say to you tonight.